Deathbringer here. Subscribe so you never miss an upload. Did you know there was a D&D &D channel? If not, you're not alone. I kind of remembered reporting on this a few months ago and I just sort of lost track of it. But then Will from D&D Shorts popped up on my feed talking about it and I was like, oh yeah, that was a thing. Turns out the D&D TV channel debuted a couple weeks ago and I had no idea, nor do I have any idea how to find it. Admittedly, I don't watch a whole lot of TV. I don't even know how to turn on my remote control. So I followed Will's video. I checked out trailers for Encounter Party and Faster Purple Worm Kill Kill on YouTube, followed the link to a homepage for D&D Adventures, which took me to what looks like links to the shows, only they don't work. And under that, there are links to sites called Plex and Freevee, and the latter is owned by Amazon Prime. So I clicked on that because I have Amazon Prime and it brought me nowhere. So I finally clicked on Plex and they took me to the show's homepage where I saw this. They're rerunning the 80s D&D cartoon show. All 22 episodes of it, along with some other streaming content and a cooking show. Now, when Will looked at it, none of the links worked. Now at least one does. Still, for a Fortune 500 company, you expect better than that. And Will asked a critical question. How did Hasbro sink hundreds of thousands of dollars into a TV station and then not advertise it? Will, I think your estimates are actually kind of conservative. A TV show requires a studio, and that requires a director, assistant director, producer, camera operators, lighting, sound, set designers, makeup, engineers, editors, caterers, receptionists, and a swarm of assistants. And they hired big name talent, Matthew Lillard, Seth Green, Patton Oswalt. And you know what? The shows look pretty good. I actually want to see Faster Purple Worm Kill Kill. Who doesn't want to see Hollywood celebrities die? That's a no-brainer. Like, I was all in on that. The Encounter Party trailer debuted on YouTube two weeks ago with 15,000 views. That's, that's less than my review of Dragon Bank. And I'm not saying I'm better. I'm saying Hasbro is a Fortune 500 company. I'm a high school teacher from New Jersey. This is my side hustle. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, by the way, and this channel is about all things role-playing games. And if you don't like Hasbro Watsy clickbait, I don't blame you. I got tons of other videos. You can check out videos about improving your pacing, my reviews of Dragon Bane and Zoo Mafia, and The Lost City with Bob, World Builder, and Dungeon Masterpiece. Just a couple weeks ago, someone complained about me doing Hasbro clickbait stuff. And it's like, why are you clicking on it? That's proof that it works. Go click on something else. Anyway, how did this happen? Well, I can only speculate. This is based on what I'm gleaning from reading The Hollywood Reporter and The Wall Street Journal, as well as Hasbro's third quarter earnings report. So. The D&D channel was shepherded by E1, Entertainment One, which Hasbro bought four years ago for $4 billion. That's billion with a B. And they just sold to Lionsgate in August for only $500 million. And despite my efforts researching on the internet, I was not able to actually figure out who owns Faster Purple Worm Kill Kill? Is it Lionsgate or is it Hasbro? I'm thinking if Hasbro Wizards owned it, they would be putting more effort into advertising it. Lionsgate just bought it 16 weeks ago. They might be saying, we own what? Like there's a D&D channel? The other answer might simply be it's a case of a too large company having too many employees and too many C-suite executives not knowing exactly what they're advertising or what they own or who their audience is. Like Will asked, didn't anyone in the supply chain check? I don't know, didn't anyone check to see if the deck of many things was printed correctly? I don't work for a Fortune 500 company, but I have a number of friends and family members who do. They have told me stories about lots of levels of redundancy where they have multiple bosses, sometimes telling them different things, and projects that get mothballed and go nowhere. It's also instructive if you look at the history of streaming shows. So the most popular ones are Critical Role and Dimension 20, and they are by far the most popular. Critical Role was spun off of Geek and Sundry, which was started by Felicia Day, and she sold it to Legendary Pictures, which is a big Hollywood production company, and presumably she got a whole boatload of money, good for her, but Critical Role left and took their show to Twitch. The cast of Dimension 20 came out of College Humor, which, like Vice, was backed by venture capitalists. And around 2015, they were one of the most subscribed to channels on YouTube. I know it's hard to believe, but as little as 10 years ago, people at colleges actually had a sense of humor. When those venture capitalists pulled the plug, Brendan Lee Mulligan took many of the cast members, who are comedians and writers, to Dimension 20. Today, Critical Role might be big business, but back then it was just a bunch of nerdy voice actors having fun. 
And think of the transferable skills. These are voice actors, and Brennan Lee Mulligan's crew are comedians and writers. That's fertile ground for a lot of fun at a role-playing game table. I don't know this for sure, but maybe it has something to do with the authenticity of it, that these people were friends hanging out with each other sort of first before they tried to make a television show. Maybe the idea of big corporations creating these shows doesn't work. I can't say that for sure. Maybe Fast or Purple Worm Kill Kill is great. I don't know. I want to know. I want to see the show. And it actually streams on Saturdays. But I can tell you this, the actors on Critical Role are also the producers of the show, and that show is their life. There is zero room for error because they are not a billion dollar company. They are directly involved with every aspect of that program from conception to production to advertising. I guarantee you not one fresh cut grass tchotchke is produced without Sam's direct approval. And that's the difference between a small business and a giant mega corporation. Giant corporations are generally not good at creating things. They're good at taking something that's already created and scaling it up, but actually originating ideas, not so much. Think about this. How did Will build D&D shorts to 400,000 subscribers? The official D&D YouTube channel only has 463,000 subscribers. Ginny D has 600 thousand subscribers. And the difference is even a big channel like the Dungeon Dudes or D&D Shorts or Ginny D, they have a staff of probably anywhere from one to three people. That's what I have. They don't have offices and tons of employees. I'm filming this in my attic. I also think they're out of touch to a certain extent. In the early days of Dungeons and Dragons, Gary Gygax actually went to conventions. He was actually running Tomb of Horrors mixing it with players, playing games with them. For years, Wizards of the Coast hasn't bothered going to conventions. Now that changed this year. They're going to PAX, where I'm gonna be in just a couple of days, but they're going to present things. It's like, here's the latest things we're coming out with. The designer's not actually going out to tables and playing games at a, an eight o'clock, 12 o'clock, four o'clock, eight o'clock slot. Wizards and Dungeons and Dragons may have the largest market share, but they're soft. They're like Rocky and Rocky Three. He's on top because the fights are easy. Meanwhile, other YouTubers, streamers, and game designers are like Clubber Lang, lean and hungry, doing pull-ups on a rusty pipe in a basement. Now, my friend Jordan, the H is silent, did an interview with Bill Rayor and Matthew Lillard, who created Faster Purple Worm Kill Kill, and you can find a link to that below. Now, I'm certain they've worked hard and put a ton of passion into this project. Producers don't sleep and don't stop, but the rest of the wizard machine doesn't seem to care. And like Will, I feel genuinely bad for the creatives here. I think they're trying to make a quality television show. They've invested everything into it, and it's not being advertised properly. And that's what I think. What do you think? Share in the comments below. Also below, you'll find links to my own game, Deathbringer, and DungeonCraft Patreon, where you can get extra content and support my work. I'll see you soon. May all your rolls be 20. So what do you think, Deathbringer? Do you have any predictions on whether Hasbro can straighten themselves out? My prediction? Pain. Now click on these videos and watch more Dungeon Craft.